When last we left our intrepid adventurers, the party had been split into two groups. Most of the party members are heading to a bar. The party arrives at the bar. Seraph picks out the name of the bar in common as saying, Scholars. They enter, followed by Finn. When Akai and Australia arrive, Australia is hesitant about going in. She says it doesn't look like a bar. Akai agrees and says it looks more like a body house where men and women of loose morals congregate. She says that they have to go in and make sure that Finn is protected from women or men with loose morals. Inside the main room is beautiful. They find Seraph and Ulysses have found a table and each have a pitcher of beer. Neither man will share their pitcher, so a third pitcher is brought over. The barmaid tells them that the three pitchers are on the house. The place is full. Staff, both men and women, are wearing revealing silk garments even Akai is impressed by the setup. Her gifted eye tells her that this place must have cost a fortune. Australia says that she's heard of these places. This looks like a tall house. Akai doesn't understand. Australia says that a chia is a person who sells their body on the streets, whereas a ta is a person of pleasure, usually highborn, well-trained, and in demand. She has heard that several Taws have had their exploits immortalized in folk songs and stories. She's heard that one even has a play named after her. Of course, all these are rumors that she's heard. Her father would never let her attend such a place. Australia notices that Finn is now talking to a couple of scantily clad women. He's holding his lute and gesturing to it, and the women seem to understand what he wants. She also notices that there are a pair of women sitting next to both Ulysses and Seraph. Out of the corner of her eye, she sees that Akai is left while she was looking around. She sees that Akai is talking to a merchant, and as Australia watches, she sees Akai smiling, something that the woman never seems to do. And from where she is sitting, she sees that Akai has her hand on the man's money purse. In a moment, the man's purse is off his belt, and it disappears into Akai's pocket. Australia suddenly makes the connection. All this time, Akai has been traveling with them. It turns out that Akai is a thief. Australia is shocked. In the manor on the hill, Junico holds out a red-wrapped small box to Scala. Despite being ready to find and kill Lyssa, the mage is intrigued by the box she asks what it is, and Junico tells her to open it and see. Scala does open it. It's a ring of perfect beauty. She's stunned and asks why he's giving her a present. He tells her it isn't a present. He tells her that his official period of mourning for his wife is over, and he wants to wed again. He tells her that the marriage to Kita Cho, his first wife, was to cement his claim to Sylvia's rest. But for a second marriage, he believes he will marry for love. He says he wants to marry her. Scala feels faint and goes over to sit down. She tells him that she is honored and she'll always care for him. However, she says that she's cursed. Her mind and body could one day be controlled by Dystoria. 
and she could be made to hurt him. She gets up as if to walk away, and he asks her point blank, What is your answer? Yes or no? And she says, 